good afternoon and good night everyone. My name is Logan and in this video I'm going to show you how to work a compound microscope as well as how to correctly operate our dissecting scopes. First though, let's start over here with our compound microscope. Focusing on the compound microscope first, make sure the microscope is plugged in and that the light intensity dial is turned on. From there you can take a slide, place it on the stage, and then use the course adjustment knob to raise the stage, which can be found on both sides of the microscope. Then, there are stage controls on the right side of the stage, which can be used to move the slide forward and backward, as well as left and right, in order to bring the specimen underneath the objective lens. Once the slide is underneath the 4x lens, which is the first lens you should use when focusing on a specimen, you can adjust the distance between the ocular lenses by gently sliding them together or apart in order to match the distance between your pupils. Following this, look through the ocular lenses and use the coarse and fine focus knobs to bring the specimen into full focus. Once that's complete, fine tune the left ocular lens, allowing for increased definition. There should be no blur and no unclear areas of the specimen. It should all be in focus. If there is any smudging that is apparent on a lens, use lens paper to clean both the ocular lenses and the objective lens you are currently using. And voila! You should now have a specimen in clear focus using the 4X objective lens. Before we move on to the next one though, we'll want to adjust the field iris diaphragm, which is right below the stage, right here. You'll want this region of shadow around the edges of your field of view, allowing for a more centralized point of light on your specimen. Plus, the lever above this diaphragm is called the condenser, which allows for very fine control of light levels. This technique is called Kohler illumination, and it allows for a more evenly lit specimen. All right, now that everything is in focus, we are completely done using the 4X lens for now, until you go in lab, but that'll be later. We're now going to rotate to the 10X lens for further magnification. This time, though, when you're focusing, be sure to use only the fine focus knob instead of the coarse focus, as when you're this close to the slide and you try to move the coarse focus too much, you could actually break or damage the slide, and that's obviously problematic. We can also slightly rotate the fine focus knob back and forth, creating the sense of a three-dimensional structure underneath the lens. This is called through focusing. We can now move on to the 40X lens. Again, rotate the nose piece to the 40X lens. Keep in mind, on some microscopes, there is also a 100X lens, but that is only for oil immersion. Generally, as the magnification of a specimen increases, the more light you'll need in order to even see it. So keep that in mind when you're moving through the different objective lenses. So since I'm at 40, I'm going to raise mine just a little bit so I can see my specimen below. Once you're at 40x, use only the fine focus knob for adjustments, just like you were at the 10x lens. Once you're done examining the slide, be sure to rotate the nose piece back to 4x, lower it just a bit, so the next person doesn't have to worry about that, and then remove the slide from the stage. And once that's done, you put your slides and your microscope back where you got them from. Additionally, be sure to turn down the light intensity dial and switch off the power before unplugging the microscope. Properly carry the microscope using the front and back handles, like so, and never slide or push a microscope across a bench, as that could misalign delicate lenses and mirrors. Now that we talked about the most important parts of our compound microscope, we're going to switch gears and focus on our dissecting scope. These scopes are quite versatile. They're designed to be looking at already dissected specimens underneath the scope, because most of those don't fit underneath a compound microscope. They have one continuous zoom lens, and it has an added feature of being able to move and manipulate your specimen so you can look at whatever structure that you want to underneath the dissecting scope. They can also locate tissue on specimens, which can then be used to create a wet mount and inspect it further under a compound microscope. When looking at a specimen through the lenses, there are two light sources that can be used for different purposes. The first is called epi-illumination, which allows you to light the sample from above. This is used for more surface level inspection of a specimen. The other is called trans-illumination, and that allows light to pass through a sample. This is helpful if you're looking for any structures within a translucent sample. Of course, both of these lights can be turned on at the same time, but you should only use these two lights individually if you want the best results, as this prevents the two light sources from interfering with each other. 
So that's the dissecting scope. Once you're done, as usual, you move the specimen off. You'll return this when you're done with it. And you unplug the dissecting scope and return it to wherever you retrieved it from. Now that you know how to operate both the compound microscope and the dissecting scope, which covers topics such as being able to focus on a slide from 4x to 40x, as well as the differences between trans illumination and epi illumination, the best way to hone your skills in lab is to practice. Spend some time looking at specimens under both microscopes. Even bring in some specimens of your own that you'd like to examine under the scopes if you'd like. Finally, if you have any questions concerning the content of this video, please reach out to your professor or your TA and they will be happy to assist you. I hope this video helps you as you begin working with the dissecting and compound microscopes, and I'm sure I'll see you in lab. Thank <laughs> you.